Hey, as you know, we are in the summer swimming season. And as uh, it seems to be the annual tradition of uh, finding enough lifeguards, the second tradition is finding a way to keep Lambert Pool Park Park Pool open every yep. year. Mm -hmm. And we bring Bob Williams back from Parks and Rec about that very subject. Bob, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Oh, good morning. Glad to be here. Let's talk about Lambert's pool there because every year we're going through something with this pool. This predates you, obviously. Sure. As Steve Catlett had uh, said, that one of the previous uh, directors of uh, Parks and Rec, it's uh, it's it's a rotten soil for the for a swimming pool location. Well, yeah, there's an underground stream there, believe it or not, yeah. uh, in, in the deep end of the competition pool. Uh, that fun geology that we have in the area uh, keeps water flowing. We actually have in our in a pit down in our pump house, there's a pipe there just for the groundwater to keep it flowing out. And uh, I did not know that. Yeah, and we've got some uh, different valves in the wintertime when we uh, shut down the pool. We've actually got some valves to control the groundwater pressure so it doesn't lift the liner in the pool. So it's always a challenge. Uh, last year, we... Uh, I mean, the pools, I talked to somebody recently that said, hey, I worked there 40 years ago at that pool, and it looks exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> same groundwater, too. Yeah, same groundwater, uh, same construction style and stuff like that. And uh, we've certainly been trying to uh, keep it open. You know, a lot of Band-Aids over the, the years and the decades. And uh, last year we replaced a lot of pumps, a lot of chlorinator pumps, a lot of uh, circulating pumps. And these are not small pumps either. These are... Like the slide pool, I think, has a 10-horsepower pump we replaced mm. last year. And, uh, we've got several chlorinators, muriatic acid pumps, and stuff like that that uh, constantly need uh, uh, updated. And even this year, we've, we've had to uh, use our backups. Uh, we always have backup pumps for each one of our pumps, so we can try to keep things moving along. What is the current status of the pool in terms of its availability? Uh, at, over at Lambert, we, we are having a challenging year, and it's not open at this point. Uh, we start the process back in April uh, when we start opening the pools for the season. We start, you know, cleaning the pools, uh, checking the pipes, checking the pumps, uh, fill the water, uh, put water in the pool. Cause sometimes you don't know what, just like when your roof, you know, doesn't leak until it rains. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes when you uh, don't know the problems we have in the pools until we put water in them, which you do in early May. And uh, Lambert this past year, we've, when we put, start put water in it uh, and prepping it for uh, inspection, they, each of our pools gets inspected by the health department. And uh, we just couldn't get the flow rate up high enough. That's the gallons per minute. <clears throat> we need to get about 620 gallons per minute flowing through our pumps. Uh, we have 15 horsepower pumps uh, that push water through the circulating system and our filters. And uh, couldn't get the flow rate up. We tried to uh, work with a, a dozen different commercial pool vendors. It's a little different in your household pool, a little more complicated. Uh, we've done pressure tests on the system. Uh, we've run cameras through our lines, and at this point, uh, we've tracked it down to we've got a pretty surprise, pretty significant leak in our uh, skimmer lines. Uh, we've run cameras where we can. There's about a, in fact, we were running more cameras yesterday because we had to drain the pool to get to the bottom of the, the pool lines. And uh, city staff came over and helped us with their cameras, and we got in about 30 feet. Unfortunately, we need about 60 or 70 more feet, which we couldn't see. So we're going to have to start digging up lines to see where that leak is we do know we're leaking water and that's probably why we're uh, impacting the flow we're just not pushing in the system we're pushing it outside the system how long has it been since those pipes were replaced bob uh it could be 40 years some of those pipes that and uh, it's at most yeah i don't uh, i haven't heard any history where those have been replaced you know we've already placed the the, the main pump this year uh, with our backup pump, um, the impellers were bad on it, so we probably wasn't pushing as much water flow. We did uh, increase the flow a little bit, um, but we're still short uh, to pass inspection. So we're uh, that that uh, leak is probably significant enough right now that it's not letting us get our flow rate up uh, to pass inspection. Of course, we want it to be healthy. We just can't open it uh, just because it looks pretty. Uh, we've got to meet all the, the requirements for uh, chemicals, you know, the pH, the chlorine. Uh, as well as the flow rate to make sure that uh, when we get 100 kids in there that uh, we're getting it filtered on, a, on an appropriate basis. Any estimated time of completion on this, Bob? Uh, it, it's, it's unknown at this point, and I know that's not an answer people like to, to hear, but it, I mean, it is frustrating for us because uh, we've been certainly working on this for a very long time. and. Just kind of, you know, again, like whether it's your house or your car. I remember helping Dad work with the car as a light jockey when I was a kid. And you fix one thing, and it seems like something else goes bad. And that's what's happening here is we fix one thing, we replace a pump, we fix a valve, and, and something else shows up. And that's what's been happening this year. It's been happening every year. Uh, last year we had problems with uh, getting a new liner in. Uh, we had some problems with chlorinator pumps going down. 
and we'd have to close for a day or two. Those were quick fixes, uh, but we're, we're at the root of the problem. I mean, this system's so old that, you know, again, we talked about original pipes, and they're all underground, so this is the point where we're digging them up now, and we're starting that uh, in the next day or two as we get uh, our, our staff to get the backhoe over there and, and um, delicately pulling the dirt away because we've got a lot of pipes, both drain and return lines, in the same trenches. Uh, and um, we're not sure exactly where they go. There's not any as-built drawings. We know roughly where they're going. It's, it's, it's that old. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll just try to keep everybody updated as we go along, but we just we don't know what we're going to find. You know, it's, it's just uh, a challenging. Um, Who's providing the funds to do all this work to try to repair this pump? Uh, well, we're doing it with, you know, some of the operational funds that we have. Um, we Also, the, the city provides some funding to offset some of the costs uh, for running the pool there uh, so um, you know we're trying to be as efficient as possible um, but you know we we anticipate that every year we're going to have some you know challenges whether it's again last year replaced a lot of pumps and um, those aren't cheap because those aren't just you know uh, little you know motors that you uh, maybe get for your household or whatever these are you know 15 horsepower pumps are our main pumps and what are those cost we replaced a nine horsepower pump last year for about ten grand, and uh, so fifteen horsepower. If we had to replace it new, um, I'm not sure what the cost of that is, but it's, it's significantly more than that. And uh, that's why we, we actually get uh, them repaired and replaced. We replace bearings and uh, windings and all that before several times before we have to go to a new product. So some of our pumps are quite old. <laughs> Jonathan, Bob. Mm -hmm. I've got some questions for you. Great. I've got some stuff that people are just not happy with, sure. with the rec center. Sure. Basketball. Mm -hmm. It used to run really, really well. Seasons used to be 12, 14 games. Mm -hmm. The latest seasons have been eight. Um, all of a sudden, kids who count on playing basketball all summer at the rec center, I believe this summer, the summer rec basketball league is, is not happening or is truncated. Um, I mean, I know – and, and I've been let me let me give you a little history. I've been sure. I've been sponsoring coaching teams for 27 years at the rec yeah. center. Mm -hmm. um, there are times where pe teams don't people don't feel safe in there anymore. Um, we used to have I mean Bobby Shaw ran it for years. Ronnie Watkins mm -hmm. ran it for years, and the the person who actually ran the rec center was there from one to nine. I mean they were there mm -hmm. through the whole thing. The current establishment, the current guy who runs it, from what I've seen. It's a nine to five job, and then they're they're basically kids running the rec center at night. Um, I see, I know coaches that aren't happy. I know parents that aren't happy. I know a lot of kids aren't happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you take a season where everybody was used to 12, 14 game seasons and then playoffs, all of a sudden it's eight. All of a sudden, out of the blue, one of my buddies, I was going to help him coach and sponsor this summer. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, they're not having a summer league. I'm like, why would they not have a summer league? Why would they not have something indoors, something when the kids really, really need activities what what happened what what's going on uh well uh, part of that change was uh during covid uh we covid's to, been covid's been gone for a while but, man but i'm just kind of trying to get some history here you know some some things changed because it used to be we didn't have a spring season and and we had summer season and during covid we added a spring season that's making popular and um part of you know that that ended up having you know, like four seasons of basketball a year and um but spring's when a lot of kids are playing baseball. Spring's always been the, the smallest. The reason they didn't do a spring season was so many kids were playing Little League. But summer, there's not a heck of a lot going on. I mean, a lot of kids were really looking forward to that. And now it's not there. I'm just, I'm just wondering what's going on. What, is, what was the thought process behind it? And, I mean, I know sometimes people say, oh, we don't have enough referees. Have y'all gone into the schools and recruited basketball players oh, yeah. to referee? I mean, I know that I know you guys have started paying more, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, but what's going on? Why, why are the kids of Berkeley County not going to have a basketball league this summer to play in? Um, that was just an internal decision that uh, the, both the recreation staff and, and, the, and the board made. Um, it, it is different. Uh, it was also determined that due to some of the issues that we've been seeing this past year with um, some of the participants and spectators in the stands, you know, we talked about safety. Uh, we're just spending too much time in the gym, and I know that doesn't make maybe that doesn't make sense, but um, we we needed a break. We you know having four. You, know, you you guys needed a break, and no, so no, all these not, kids I, aren't playing basketball. John, no, you, you have to let him finish answering his question. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and there are other activities. I mean, I can tell you that our day camp uh, activities, are, are, our numbers are higher than they've ever been. Uh, we do have clinics that we run throughout the season with uh, various high school coaches, as well as Vicki Bullitt has a lot of, of uh, clinics going on in the summertime. So we, we do have alternatives uh, and things like that. And we've been asked to do more than just sports in our X centers. And, and we're getting more and more demand for other activities. And that's what we're trying to serve as many people we can uh, on a rec league schedule. You know, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. And we, and we try to say that we are a rec league. We're not, you know, there's a lot of competition leagues out there, especially whether it's travel league or when you get in high school and stuff like that. We're, that's not who we are. Right. We're, we're rec league, and we were trying to give people experiences, and, and, and yeah, we try to, and, you know, eight months, eight, nine months of the year, we do have basketball, and, and uh, we have made some changes to, uh, you know, activities. We've, we've had more staff. You know, we've brought into all of our, our, our practices and our games. Uh, I was run by the rec center last night because we're just finishing up our, our, our spring league right now, and that parking lot was packed. Yeah, you know, I was there, and uh, and yeah, we have had challenges like trying to get refs, and that's why we tried to uh, increase the pay for certified refs and try to match them with you know, non-certified refs to make sure we get a better experience uh, out on the phone because we've had a lot of complaints about excuse me about refs, and you know we're trying to constantly adapt and constantly change to uh, you know the, you know what's happening out in you know whether it's the players or whether it's the parents out you know because we. Uh, we've had to make changes, you know, because parents, you know, again, whether they don't feel safe uh, or, or they just you know, are complaining about uh, other parents. Um, but I tell you, our staff, I mean, maybe you're not, you're not particularly seeing our staff there, you know, from, you know, one to nine or whatever. But I can tell you that uh, we've got staff, uh, our full-time staff that are at both of our centers until late at night. So, because um, I signed their timesheet, so right. I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I agree, and I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to sound like like I just, I've no, just talked no. to a lot of other coaches sure. and a lot of parents that are like, we no longer feel safe there like we used to. Mm -hmm. We no now, longer there, feel how well it's run. Safety keeps coming up. What do we don't feel safe? What does that mean? Physical safety? Is it? Well, we, we've had, uh, you know, for, and this is what I, my observation and what's being brought to my attention is, you know, and it's not uh, safety. Uh, pertaining to, uh, you know, I don't want to say uh, some activity, outside activity coming into the center, uh, but it's been, you know, uh, family members against family members, you know, it's the shouting uh, that may be motivational that gets a little carried away sometimes <laughs> uh, in the court, and some people get offended by that, and, and they, you know, shout out that, hey, they're not, uh, they, they got offended or they don't feel safe because they feel attacked and, and stuff like that. So we've put up and uh, made, uh, you know, spectator code of conduct uh, that we've posted and, and uh, in our gyms. And we are trying to let people know at the beginning of games, like, hey, these are expectations, you know. This is these are kids, you know. It's kind of like with the old little league uh, uh, signs that have gone up over the years. Is say, you know, these you know the, the people or coaches are volunteers. You know, these kids are here to have a good time. This isn't uh, the, you know college league or anything like that. And, um, and and you know basketball's intense around here. You know, there's no question well, about it. <laughs> no, and I, and I agree. And like I said, I've been I've probably coached 30, 40 teams out there, sponsored mm -hmm. you know tons and tons. Mm -hmm. um, I just, when I heard the summer season was canceled, I know there are a lot of inner city kids in Martinsburg who count on that, who mm -hmm. count on having something. And when you say it's just rec league, it's not just rec league. To them, it's the NBA finals. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, I it's everything I'm not diminishing to them. that. And yeah. these, a lot of these kids who play in these leagues are kids who don't ever have an opportunity to play in a travel situation or anything like that. This mm -hmm. is their, this is their, their Super Bowl, their NBA finals. And it, it just... More activities in the summer. Kids tend to get in trouble in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I mean, I just, speaking of somebody who's been there forever, sure. I do not get the same feeling of how the gym is run, how the, the, the professionalism of it. Now, mm -hmm. are you in there? I mean, since there have been all these issues and stuff, and I know a lot of people have complained because I know mm -hmm. five or six who have, are you in the gym a lot during the basketball season, like in the evenings to make sure everything's going on? Oh, I pop in and, and, and you know, just cool. randomly here and there, just, you know, I don't make a you know, regular occurrence because then you, people expect that. So I just try right. to randomly do stuff. I do that for my staff, too, to check on staff to see, make sure they're. And there, there are a few members of your staff that, that I really like. 
Yeah, um, so thank you. I mean, and I think some of those some of those guys and girls mm -hmm. who are in there, they really care about the kids. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I'm glad to see you are looking to make some changes. Yeah. One change, you really should. The, the summer basketball, you should have it next mm -hmm. year. I know yeah. a lot of kids and, who are disappointed. Oh, sure. And, that, and that's the kind of feedback that we're looking for. And we're always listening to the community. I'm always trying to get out to various parts of our community. Uh, I'm involved in a lot of groups and just listening, you know. That's that's a lot of what I do is just listen and say, you know, hey, what, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? And, you know, what can we, you know, do to make things different? Because like I said earlier on, we were hearing more about, hey, I'd like to do something besides sports too. And that's part of our demand. And, you know, okay, let's try to do one or two things to uh, to fill that gap too. You've mentioned that a couple of times too. Other activities mm -hmm. at the rec center. What are the other activities uh, as well, an example? Yeah, as an example, like right now, I, I got, uh, what's 50 some kids at Berkeley 2000 and then what, 20 or 30 kids down at Randy Smith right now doing an adventure day camp. Uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, we're, we're getting better at that. Uh, we, we hired uh, Jennifer Justice, who's our recreation services manager last year. And uh, she's come up in one year and just has done a fantastic job of organizing and hiring better staff. Uh, so that, um, one, it's more interesting, uh, for the kids to come in and, and do those types of activities. Some other activities we have, you know, we do a sports clinics cause some people just like doing clinics like, you know, okay. Or, you know, maybe I want to get together with one of the high school coaches that are coming in. Maybe uh, the Vicky Bullet is doing a girls only uh, type of, uh, of clinic. So those types of activities. Uh, we still do silver sneakers. Uh, some people are really interested. Our Zumba class has exploded. You know, those types of things. But we're also doing, like, opening the children's garden this year. You know, people have asked about that, and we were able to hire staff and get that cleaned up. Uh, it's kind of those uh, hands on, ex you know, get the kids to explore in the nature uh, type setting. And we're doing th more things like movies in the park and uh, color run and stuff like that, other types of events. And, you know, we've seen those explode, too. We just had June Jubilee again this past uh, Sunday, two days ago, and uh, we had some great crowds. The weather was great, uh, but I also know that we do that with the Big K's car show. And uh, last year was there. I, was, I loved it. I had about 80 cars this year. They set a record, 188 registered cars for that event. So, you know, this, we're doing a wide variety of events because, you know, people are telling us, you know, we want to see all these different things, you know, whether it's the, the sports, whether it's the pools, whether it's, you know, the day camp, you know, because uh, some other programs aren't being held in our community. So we're trying to, to offset that as well. Do you find that, that Jonathan's frustration about basketball, mm -hmm. do you hear that from a lot of other people as well? It's mixed. I mean, yeah, I hear, you know, and, and again, it, it depends on what your passion is. And I love that passion. You know, there's there's no question about that passion. Um, and, and some people are going, you know, this is this is what I want to see, too. So it's 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 challenging to balance all those different um needs uh, that the community has so i mean is there an issue when there you know things going on during the day why basketball can't i mean and i keep going back to basketball just because that's what these kids in martinsburg and you see the kids who are doing mm -hmm. it i mean i i, I mean I, I coach so many kids through the years that i mean that's sort of their only outlet the only thing they have and maybe a lot some of these kids are not ones that are going to a color run or going over to the the june jubilee which is great for the community mm -hmm. but it's not a it's not a kid focused thing right 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 um and and just out of curiosity why i mean all the seasons were sort of shortened and i mean i know the the team that i sponsored this past season i know they had times where they'd have a game and then they wouldn't have a game for two weeks and then they'd have a couple of games in one week i mean it, it just it feels disjointed, I think, is is the best way to put it. Um, and it's, uh, I mean, I don't know how soccer is. I mean, are you still have? Are you still running soccer? Oh, yeah, yeah. In the Soc summer and everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, soccer's going on right now, and okay. it's very popular. Oh, it is? Yeah. Do you have, do mm -hmm. you, now, as far as the sports go, do you make a profit on soccer? Do you make a profit on basketball? I mean, because basketball, it seems like soccer, you're not charging for people to get in. I mean, because you really can't. It's a field. Basketball, every time somebody comes in, I think it's now three bucks a piece. I mean, you're, it, basketball isn't a loss leader, and I'm sure a lot of other things that you guys do are. Um, why, what was, where was the decision to take the basketball seasons down from 12, 14 games to eight? Just out of, just, I mean, this is just out of, this is a question yeah, that I And I, I don't had. have a good answer for that because I'm not involved in that specific planning. I got a lot of other projects that I'm right. personally involved in. Um, but I do ask my staff to make sure that, you know, as they're making changes, they're uh, talking with the community, talking with the coaches. And, and so I can't give you a good answer. I don't even suggest that I no, do no. right now. But uh, I do know that on all our programs, you know, whether it's, you know, something like, um, 
you know, basketball or, or soccer or whether it's our gymnastics and dance programs. You know, we all look at that from what does it cost us? What does it cost us to operate the building? Uh, what does it cost us to maintain staff? And, you know, we look at what's our break even point, you know, because we, we try to get as close to break even as possible in all our programs. Well, that was my, my question was, is basketball, I mean, are you breaking even or making money on it? Or are you breaking even or making money on soccer? I mean, as the director, obviously, you, you know the numbers. Yeah, I mean, it looks like on, on all those, we're, we're pretty close to breaking even. I can say that we're probably not breaking even on that. And that's why uh, uh, we, we look for other you know revenue sources. But we also try to keep the cost down so that more people can participate in uh, those events. So that's, 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 that's what we try to balance, you know. Because we'd want to, you know, and, and we also have scholarships that, you know, if there's someone that just wants to play but just can't because of their family situation, you know, okay, come to us. And, and we'll, there are people out there that want to help kids uh, participate in whatever activity that we have. So Bob Williams has been our guest here from Parks and Rec. He's the executive director. And Bob, to circle back to Lambert yes. Pool to close mm-hmm. this discussion down, if you could uh, once again give us an idea when we might be able to see that pool operational this summer. It, you know, if we're digging up uh, water lines, it could be a couple weeks yet. What we are doing to accommodate in the meantime is, is and this will be active tomorrow, uh, is we're working with EPTA uh, that uh, we will have bus passes that uh, people can use to, to uh, get on the bus right over to War Memorial uh, for free, you know, and, and get a ride back home uh, from wherever their uh, service location is. And uh, we're also lowering the rate of War Memorial to the Lambert price because the Lambert gets more subsidies and so that uh, people can um, more readily uh, use that pool while this one is down. Will that price be the same for everybody or just those everybody. who are displaced from Lambert? No, no we're just it's going to be for everybody. So. And the EPTA network for transporting, is it going to be a central location or various stops along the way or what? Uh, in talking with them, it's like wherever uh, – the, whatever stops they have currently, you can just get on there. You don't have to come to uh, Lambert. In fact, we won't have a, a, a separate stop there uh, because it's not already on their route, but you can get on anywhere on their route. Uh, you can pick up a bus, bus pass from us and uh, starting tomorrow, and uh, you can ride it for free to get to the pool. I know at this point it would be speculation, but is, is Lambert Pool more likely to be open at some point this summer or less likely to be open at some point this summer? That's a challenging question and the, the problem is i just don't know because i don't know what we're going to find so we're making every effort to get it open even if it's a shortened season and you know even if the grass doesn't look good and stuff like that um we're tracking every effort to uh, uh with all our vendors and staff to uh, get as the pipes prepared and get it opened uh, so people can enjoy it as much as possible this season was there anything that could have been done in advance to avoid the situation you're in right now other than replacing the pipes from 40 years ago it's just like, you know, until you turn the water on, you don't know what you're going to find. Uh, you shut it down every season in, ho- in best hopes that it's uh, going to be successful next year and opening it up. Most of the time it is. Some years you're going to have this where it's just not going to be successful. Bob, thank you. did you have a final question, John? I don't know. I do. Just, I just want to say thank John. you, and thank you for listening to my question. Oh, sure. I'm, I'm, just really, I'm just really passionate about the kids. No, um, and I'd just I like to too. say that, that I will, I'm going to drop a check off. It's 50 bucks, I think, is what you guys charge for kids to play basketball. Um, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, my company, I'm going to drop mm-hmm. a check off for 250 this week. I want to sponsor five kids who, who maybe can't play this fall. Oh, thank I you wanna, very much. I mean, yeah. I just, I care about it. Yeah, um, and that's and, what, why it works, you know. That's, yeah. This community has been awesome. I can tell you I've worked for a lot of different park systems, and this community is so awesome getting kids to play. And I, I just, I don't want you to think that I was, you know, attacking you. I no, just, no. I'm just really passionate about it. I, I care. Sure. I like, I mean, I, I, the kids, it's important. There's nothing more important than educating kids yep. and teaching them. And I, and I believe mm-hmm. that the sports that you guys have teaches them, you know, teamwork, hard yep. work, all the life lessons that these kids need to be successful. Yeah, and we're always trying to get better. So yep. thank you for your feedback. I appreciate it. Yep. Bob, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bob Williams, Executive Director of Parks and Rec.